This is Weather Center Nazaria with episode 13 coming right at you. Tropical Storm Adalia is being very stubborn this afternoon and refuses to upgrade to her hurricane status despite a tremendous amount of development indicated on all of our live satellite imagery. By 8 p.m. if not 11 p.m. sharp, we could possibly see that category one upgrade as she continues to churn towards the north, affecting the western tip of Cuba before making her way into the Gulf of Mexico where you're anticipating some pretty rapid intensification because of the dynamics in play. Let's take a look at some of our real time analysis data on this iteration of Weather Center Nazario. We're going to keep this introduction short. Folks, like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, fasten the seatbelts, let's jump in. All right, Weather Center viewers, here we go. So as of 4 p.m. Central Time, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are looking at a 70 mile per hour tropical storm continuing to move due north at 8 miles per hour with a central pressure of 987 millibars. She's very rapidly approaching hurricane strength. I truthfully believed that we would see a hurricane upgrade by this time during the day today. However, she is definitely holding on to that tropical storm title. She's really enjoying it, but I think she's really undergoing some good cyclogenesis, as we will see here once we set way over to the satellite imagery. I'm going to take a quick glance for you guys so we can see the latest update cone. We are still looking at a Big Bend, Florida landfall of a potential major catastrophic hurricane at that. The track has shifted a little further west with the most recent model data, but it hasn't deviated much, so impacts across the state are likely to stay the same, and we could see a bit of additional impacts in Georgia and parts of South Carolina and even the coast of North Carolina as she rapidly transitions off to the east headed towards Bermuda after that where things actually do get kind of interesting in terms of long-term forecast model data. But we'll get to that at another time. Right now, let's focus on what we have going on in real time. This is the satellite imagery. We're looking at a water vapor imagery as she continues to undergo intensification just to the very southwestern tip of the Cuban island. You can see we have a somewhat of a semblance of a center of circulation beginning to form. Guys, this is water vapor, and you can see good indications of cyclonic curvature and a core slash eye wall feature beginning to take shape. This is why I really do believe we're going to see hurricane intensification and then further intensification therein after. I also want you to pay close attention to what phenomena we have going on across the state of Florida. It's almost as if our features across the AOR have shifted. We have a tremendous amount of moisture not only being influxed and pushed in from Adalia, but we also have a cold pocket, a little bit of an upper level low that's transitioning to the east just to the south of the panhandle that is further instigating this northward path. In my personal opinion, I believe we will see a bit of an eastward hike. The models say otherwise. The models have been suggesting otherwise, and they've actually transitioned a bit further to the west as of most recently. But given the situation and what we have, synoptically speaking, I kind of see a little bit more of an east-northeast, if not north-northeast path for this storm, at least over the next 12 to 18 hours. And I'll show you why on the next panel. If you look over into the central and western parts of the Gulf of Mexico, we also have a new area of dry air out here. This dry air is trying to get pulled in by Adalia as well, which could try. I use that term very very definitively try to weaken the structure of the storm, but at this point, I feel as if it's almost too late for anything to really significantly inhibit the violent upward vertical motions we're seeing close to the center of the storm. Let's go over to Windy now. Windy is going to help us paint the big picture. This is 925 millibars, and look at how east side loaded this storm is. We're starting to get a resemblance of a right front and a right side quadrant where the worst of this storm is going to be. So, folks, as we continue to see the path fluctuate back and forth, whether it be off to the west or a little further to the east, if you draw a line looking forward, looking ahead, I know it's a little wonky, forgive me. I'm not very good at drawing straight lines. If you draw a line ahead to mimic what NHC has out in terms of a forecast track and you try to take this level of strong winds and intense energy associated with this storm forward and you track it out, that's going to hit a large majority of interior parts of Florida. So we are not going to be spared. We're going to see lots of tornadoes. National Weather Service is indicating a pretty good likelihood that we will see some tornadic activity from the Orlando metro area west to the western coastline of Florida. As this continues to move northward, we're going to have to pay close attention to the wraparound feeder bands we see working their way through the Keys, Miami, Cape Coral, and further northward as they wrap around this storm. We also have Franklin. Franklin has deepened tremendously over the last 12 to 18 hours. He is approaching Cat 5 
five hurricane strength, and I also believe he's going to further distort the pattern that we see in terms of what's steering Adalia. Down in the lower right-hand corner of the screen, you can see what seems to be some anticyclonic curvature in the winds, which is also going to be helping to steer her in this north and northeasterly path over the next day or so. We're going to take a look at our steering flow. As you can see, this is going to be 850 all the way up to 300 millibars. We have our trough extending down through the Gulf of Mexico that's going to help to pick her up and begin her northward track out of where she's been kind of parked for the last couple days now. And again, I definitely agree with the models. I definitely agree with the National Hurricane Center. I'm not trying to go against them. I'm not trying to make it seem like I know what I'm saying. However, I've been looking at these charts since yesterday and all through the morning today during my live stream on Instagram and everything would suggest that we're going to see an eastward fetch with this. Everything would suggest that there is going to be some wiggle room for a bit of a jog to the east-northeast as we go through time. Or I should say the northeast, excuse me. East-northeast would be a lot more sharp, and I'm not predicting that. But if you go through all millibar levels, you can see a pretty open channel to the northeast across the state of Florida, squeezing in between our developing high pressure just to the northeast of Puerto Rico, out over the central Atlantic, and our trough that continues to dig south and eastward across the Gulf Coast states, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. So time will tell. The models are in agreement that she's going to punch straight north before finally making a transition off to the east. Time will tell. I'm watching satellite like a hawk. A lot of us are watching satellite and what radar information we can get in as she passes very close to western Cuba. So time will tell. We're still in that holding pattern. I wish I had more concrete information for you. I wish I could tell you exactly what NHC and some of the subject matter experts are looking at in terms of determining our tract, what the models are thinking. But as we get more reconnaissance information, we're only going to refine that data and get more solid in terms of where she is anticipated to make impact. Folks, I've been leaning a lot on WPC the last couple of days. This is a great tool to get some live surface analysis data. I've even done some comparisons to past storms we've had forming up in this same general source region just to see what the likelihood of some deviation of the forecast could be as we go forward in time. This is our latest surface analysis as of 18 Zulu on Monday. You can see we have a stationary boundary and a bit of a warm sector developing over Georgia and South Carolina. This is likely to play a role in Adalia's movement. And as we go forward in time, taking a look at the mock charts, we are anticipating that frontal system to linger pretty much where it is before it begins to finally advect off to the southeast with support by a high pressure over the Great Lakes sinking south over the Mississippi and Ohio River Valleys. This could play a role in whether we see it go further north or to the east. There is still a little bit of wiggle room for it to try to make its way into Florida a little bit sooner. Intensification is also going to play a role in that as well. If she can get her act together and form up very powerfully, rapidly intensify like a few of our models and a few of our analysts are suggesting, we will see a bit more of a potent push due north. If she does weaken a little bit or if she does try to mitigate some of that intensification because of the dry air and and what residual wind shear we are seeing brought on by that upper level low that's still continuing to propagate eastward towards northern Florida, which is also stewing a lot of our thunderstorm activity. I can hear it raining outside my window right now. There's still a lot of moving pieces. We are developing a bit more confidence in where this storm is going to track, but there is still a little bit of distrust in what the future holds because we've seen time and time again on almost a routine basis, these storms end up having a mind of their own, especially right before landfall. And all it will take is a 5 to 10 degree compass rose adjustment in its forward progress to change the entire outcome of what we see over the panhandle through the Carolinas, through Georgia, and through interior parts of the Florida Peninsula. We're going to go over to the model viewer real quick. I just want to take you through what it looks like for the state of Florida in terms of very close proximity impacts, give you some high-res looks on what we're anticipating. I'm going to use the Florida OI to its entirety. We'll start off with precipitation. As you can see, conditions are likely to start going downhill as early as middle of the day, if not tomorrow morning because of those surges of moisture that we're seeing. So this is 30 hours into the future. You can see a 990 millibar low off the southwestern coastline of Florida. We're still behind. This is 12Z Euro model data, and we are still under anticipating under forecasting, I should say, the intensity of this system. We go to 48 hours, and you can see we finally deepen down to what could be a Category 2 approaching Category 3 storm, still aimed right at the Big Bend area, just to the north of Cedar Key, headed towards the Gainesville area as well, before she begins to finally arc more to the right, 
and head east. And it very rapidly moves on out once it's picked up by the upper air pattern. Let's go over to winds real fast. Let's go and see max wind gusts as she begins to work her way closer to our neck of the woods. We'll go 24 hours into the future. You can kind of start to see south and southwestern Florida are going to start to feel the effects, at least tropical depression force winds. I want to remind you this is in knots. So if you see the numbers, you want to add five to six numbers to them or add five to six to the number to get a more accurate assessment of what that will be in miles per hour. At the 36 hour mark, conditions along the coast are very heavily going downhill. Storm surge is definitely going to start to kick up a lot more than we'd already started to see earlier on that last panel. And the swells are only going to be intensified once we get into that super high tide period that everyone's been talking about elsewhere. 48 hours out, you can see that tropical storm conditions are starting to expand further eastward into most of central Florida, the greater central Florida area. Even the east coast is looking at potential tropical depression conditions as she begins to prep for landfall. 72 hours out, you can see as she makes her way across the northern apex of the state before moving back over open water. Most, if not all, of northern Florida, depending on the intensity of the storm, could see tropical storm to low-grade hurricane conditions. So regardless of where she makes landfall, everyone's going to get a taste of Adalia. Please, internet, don't make a joke or have fun with that. But everyone's going to get a feel for Adalia as we go forward in time over the next three days. And real briefly, let's go ahead and shift gears and go to some ensemble data just to show you what it is that we have on the horizon that not one, not two, but a few of our operational models are picking up on. We're going to use the GFS, go to the Caribbean AOI, and we're going to conclude this episode here. I just want to give you this little interesting tidbit of what she has in mind for us over the next few days. This is 72 hours out. You can see that there is a very good model consensus for a further westward push than what Hurricane Center and what the European model is indicating right now. But as we go out in time five days from now, look at all these ensemble members that actually have her doing a little bit of a wraparound trying to pay us a second visit. She wasn't satisfied with not one impact. So she's trying to work up the courage to circle back around. And we are seeing 15%-ish or so model agreement that the Central Florida area could see an East Coast impact from something along the lines of Tropical Depression, Idalia, depending on if she wants to regain strength over the Gulf Stream before coming in and how much that Bear Clinic feature uh, in terms of the cold front wants to wear it down and try to make it go post-tropical sooner than later. Really quick, I'll go over to the European model the European ensembles, I should say, just so we can slowly begin to transition out of Adalia land back to the tropics and the weather phenomena as a whole. We'll go to the tropical Atlantic. This is the 12Z run. And folks, let's try to change our perspective and look away from what we have going on close to home. And let's go ahead and look out over the Atlantic because this has been trending the last few days and NHC does have it highlighted. I haven't shown you guys, but it's out there. Let's go out to 180 hours we have some good model agreement that we're going to do see a disturbance hike north through the central Atlantic, but then we have another one just behind it that is anticipated to make that lovely old westward track either to the north or through parts of the Caribbean before potentially coming through the Bahamas and knocking on Bermuda or the southeastern United States door. I want to remind you all as we get ready to conclude this episode, it is only the end of August only the end of August. We still have a long month and a half to see what takes shape as we go through the rest of this erroneous 2023 hurricane season. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go into the conclusion. And so there you have it, folks. Thus concludes the latest episode of Weather Center Nazario. I graciously thank everyone for tuning in and for continuously checking up on the channel for all the latest updates that I've been sending out over the last few days. We are rapidly approaching zero barrier, as I call it. Once she is north of the Cuban island and begins to set her eye on the state of Florida, conditions are rapidly expected to go downhill. For tomorrow's episode, ideally, I would like to try to get it out to you all earlier than later, just so we can start to talk on a smaller scale as to what kind of influence influences and impacts we will be facing as she begins to make her way towards our state. We are already seeing an abundance of thunderstorm activity this afternoon, as a matter of fact, as that moisture from her northern flank already starts to surge northward in response to that cold pocket over the panhandle. But folks, I remind you one more time, please hit that notification bell so you can get all the latest updates from this channel. And if you have other YouTubers and weather influencers that you follow, please keep up to date with their content as well. There's going to be a lot of information and a lot of details you don't want to miss over the next couple days as we await Hurricane Adalia's arrival. With all that being said, guys, this is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.